All right, today we're going to be looking at similarity and measurement. Um, to give you an idea, similarity has the same shape, but the two figures might not be the same size. So all corresponding pairs of angles are congruent, which means equal, and the corresponding pairs of sides are in proportion. So let's take a look at what this will look like. Um, in triangle ABC, it is similar to triangle DEF, and note that they are um, named in order. So if I were to look at the way they have named these triangles, I see that A is in the first position, then B, then C. Same for the second triangle, D is first, then E, then F. And looking at the way they're named will help you to find the congruent angles or the congruent vertices, and it will also help you find side lengths that um, will form ratios. So I go ahead and sometimes when I'm first you know, dealing with these, I number the angles, and D, E, F. Now these two were literally in the same orientation. A lot of times what we see is they have been um, transformed in such a way like rotated or flipped or something like that. So paying attention to the name and the order in which the vertices are named will help you know which ones are congruent. Because you can see here A is congruent to D, and A is in the number one position and so is D. Looking at the side length ratio, they took a side length from the smaller rectangle namely AB right here, and they compared it to the side length DE. Because of that, that, that will form the same ratio as any other side from the small to its um, corresponding side on the larger. Okay, so small to large, small to large is kind of how they're comparing these, and that's help, that'll help us find a missing side in our next example. So, <clears throat> In this polygon, we have A, B, C, D, E is similar to F, G, H, J, K. So for me, just to identify that um, vertice number one is A, let me get to the editing here, and F is number one, right? Because if I number them, one, two, three, four, five, I can kind of come up with so I can find CD. This is CD right here, this X. And if I find CD, it's in the middle in position 3 and 4. So that would be like HJ, 3 and 4, and HJ is right here. So in this case, I always usually work left to right. So I'll do the larger to the smaller ratio. So I will do the CD to H. J, those are the corresponding sides, and it would be in the same ratio as, for instance, this EA side, and EA corresponds to um, KF, so EA and line and segment, side segment, um, KF. So if I put in the numbers, I would have the X, and I have the 10 from the smaller one, would be equal to the EA, which is 33 and the FK which is 11. So through cross multiplication I get 11x equals 330 and dividing both sides by 11 will give me the missing side length I need of 30 feet. Don't forget your unit label. In example 2 now it looks like the two triangles are kind of transposed one inside the other. Um, and we need to look at a couple different things. Looking at the way that they are named, one, two, three, one, two, three, we can definitely see that you know vertices A and D are the ones that are equal. So if I'm looking for AD, that's this little missing part here, I know that it's part of it's not part of a triangle, but rather it's a segment that is part of the whole segment AC, which is the larger triangle from, from the first name given. So I'm given AB and I'm given DE, so I can say that AB to DE will be equal to, and again, AC and DC. 
I can't just use AD by itself because line segment AD is not part of a triangle, but the whole side length AC from the larger one, comparing it to um, the smaller triangle DC. So putting in the numbers, I have um, 11 over 7 is equal to, and in this case I have for the whole side length AC, X plus 15, and that is over DC, which is 15. So through cross multiplication, I have an equation that looks like this. Um, 11 times 15 is 165, and then I'm going to be taking 7 times this whole quantity. I have to use the distributed property. Make sure I get my notation right here. It's plus. So I'll be subtracting 105 from both sides. So when I divide by 7, I actually do have um, x is approximately equal to 8.5. Seven, and that will be that missing side that I needed. And I could try it, and I could add it to 15, then divide by 15 to see if the ratio is the same as 11 divided by 7, and it actually is. I get the same decimal. And the final example will be an indirect measure. So we're using the information given in the paragraph. There is a little illustration, but I know the numbers are pretty small. So this is a man is five feet tall, standing next to a tree. The tree and the man are perpendicular to the ground. The sun's rays strike the tree and the man at the same angle, forming two similar triangles. The length of the man's shadow is seven feet, and the length of the tree shadow is 14 feet. How tall is the tree? If I look at the height of the man and compare it to the height of the tree, is equal to the shadow of the man compared to the shadow of the tree. So 7x is equal to, in this case, 70, which is 5 times 14. Divide both sides by 7, and I get x is 10 feet. That would be the height of my tree. <clears throat> Some um, alternate ways to do this, remember we said there's more than one way to think proportionately. Um, so you could also be thinking of the height of the man to the shadow of the man, right? Is equal to the height of the tree to the shadow of the tree. And notice that in the cross products, um, it's still the same as it was in our first example. So more than one way to think proportionately, as long as you set it up correctly, um, you will be okay.